there because he prayed. Jesus prayed constantly. You know, we're kind of frustrated with prayer. Maybe we just don't feel satisfied with it. Or we don't pray enough, so we start to feel guilty. You know, God doesn't want us to feel guilty. He wants us to be drawn in by grace. All right, let's, let's talk about what prayer is not. Right, prayer is not a magic wand that you wave, and all of a sudden everything changes in your life. God is not our genie saying, your wish is my command. God is not our servant. We are God's servants. Prayer is not secret words or incantations or chants that if you know just the right way to do them, you'll get your own way. Prayer is not a fire extinguisher to be used in case of emergency. I really like that one. Many people treat prayer like that. They don't pray on their good days. The only time is when it's a pain or a crisis. And then that fire hose of prayer gets sprayed all over everything. Blizzard's coming, let's pray. I got cancer, let's pray. My marriage is in trouble, let's pray. All we can do now is pray. Like prayer is our last resort when you've tried everything else. Prayer is not our last resort. Prayer should be our first step. So before you buy the car, you pray. Before you look for a job, you pray. Before you, okay, accept a date maybe, you pray. Before we eat our food, we pray. We should make prayer our first choice, not the last resort in every area of our life. Okay, prayer is not a tug of war with God. Like if you keep badgering and pestering God, please God, please. God is not going to say, all right, fine, you can have it. Or bargaining. Okay, God, if you'll do this for me, I'll do that for you. You can't bribe God. Prayer's not a guilt, a, a ritual for guilt or, or punishment for your sin. Prayer is not penance for sin, although there are, in the Catholic tradition, you go to confession and they assign you a certain number of prayers that, uh, of certain types that you need to say. I'm not knocking their tradition. I just believe that prayer is a privilege and not a duty. It's a joy, not a responsibility that got to pay back something that you did wrong. Now when you do something wrong, yeah, it's good to pray. But it's not cart before the horse. Yeah, it's not, it's not a responsibility. It puts prayer in a different light. So that's really what some of what prayer is not. But let's talk about what, why we should pray. First of all, God loves us. And God wants to hear from us about everything. It doesn't have to be about something spiritual. It doesn't have to be about something religious. It just has to be about whatever is on our mind. And if you're interested in something, God is interested in it too. God wants us to talk about our interests and is waiting to hear from us. Because where do we get our interests? We got our interests from God. All of our favorite things from raindrops on roses to whiskers on kittens, God gave us the inspiration to like those things. And God gave each one of us different desires and different things that we like to do. And you know why? At the, at, that way everything in the world gets done. Because somebody's got an interest in it. And God knows what you like better than you do. Second, God enjoys talking with us. God is our parent. Parents are interested in what their kids are interested in. So if we're bored when we're praying, it's because we're talking about things that we think we ought to be talking about and not what we're really interested in. God shares our interests. Now, if you, an, an, an adult, you talk to a child and, and you have them tell you a story. When, a, when an adult tells a story, there's a logical sequence to it. It's either chronological or relational or, you know, or, or an order of importance or something. But when a kid tells a story, 
It's a random spatter pattern, you know. They give you an idea over here, and then they go over here, and they give you an idea, and that's the way their brain works, right? And as an adult who loves that child, you, you do everything you can to follow along with that. And you encourage them and say, wow, well, what a great idea. And then what happens? And then they go over here and they do all of these things. And, and that's the way God listens to us. Because that's kind of the way, when I pray, I know, it's a random spatter pattern. And I'm glad that God is wise enough to understand what I'm trying to say. But he listens to us no matter how we, com we communicate. Sometimes we're very orderly. And sometimes, God longs for us to talk to him about whatever's on our hearts. Just talk. That's prayer. So as we move forward in these next few weeks, here are some basics to ground us about prayer. First of all, prayer is a conversation. It's not a ceremony. There's no right way to pray. So in a conversation, that means talking and listening. As if we're doing a one-way monologue in the sky in the dark. I have fallen asleep talking to God. So let's start with, hey, God, did that bug you when I started the prayer that way today? Some people were like, <gasps> yeah. Not, maybe not here, but to the other churches, there were some that were like, startled by that. Hey, God, I'm listening. Is there anything you want to say to me? Here's what's on my mind today. I'm going to read some scripture. What would you like me to hear? What, what lesson do you want me to get out of the word today? Now, sometimes there's an impression of an answer, and sometimes not. But talking and listening with God, that's a conversation. Second, prayer is a relationship, not a ritual. And I just love this Greg Olson painting. He's such an inspired artist. He always brings Christ into a modern day setting, but with such compassion and, and realism. It's all about getting close to God. We get stuck in this cycle of, oh, I've got to pray. I've been praying, so I feel guilty. And of course, remember, God doesn't want us to feel guilty. He just wants to talk with us. He loves to listen. We get to talk to the creator of the universe who wants to listen to us. What an amazing truth. And it's not only amazing that God wants to listen, but that he's interested in everything that I'm interested in. God, I had a bad day today. God, I really like that team, and I'd like for them to win. I know they're not going to, but I want to talk to you about that anyway. That's okay. Nothing's off limits. God loves to hear from his children. Third, God listens to prayers that are simple and sincere. You do not have to use flowery language. Oh, great, wonderful God, potentate of the universe. You don't have to sound spiritual. You don't have to use religious cliches. You just talk to God. The only condition is that it's sincere and it's from your heart. It's simple, authentic, honest, gutsy. Pray about what you feel, not what you think you ought to be praying about. It's just simple. It's fine to just say, hey God, it's me. Sometimes that's the simplest and most powerful prayer. When you don't feel good, God, really, I don't feel good today. I don't want to talk to you right now. That's a prayer. God, I'm really mad. That's a prayer. I don't get it. I prayed for this, and it hasn't happened. And that's a prayer, too. Just be honest. And finally, I want you to know that God shows grace by answering prayers. Answered prayers shows what God is really like. No one is more generous than God. And when we pray, we ask for something, we make a request or a petition, God responds. Over 20 times in the New Testament, we are commanded to ask. And, and uh, Linda shared some of that today. Ask and it shall be given. You have not because you ask not. If you ask anything in my name, 
As a child of God, we're commanded to ask God for everything. And with every answer, God shows us he is a good, good God. And you know what? The answer is not always yes. Does any parent give their child everything they ask for? Of course not. God doesn't say yes to everything either. And we don't understand why, but we're not God. Sometimes God says no for our protection. Sometimes for our direction. Sometimes for our correction. Or our perfection. To grow our character, character. To help us see what we could not see. Because there is something far greater than what we are asking. God has three answers for most of us. And then he has a fourth answer that I think he just uses for me. So he'll say yes. And what else will he say? No. Or he'll say, not yet, or not now. And then the one he saves for me is, you've got to be kidding me. Are you <laughs> asking me for that? <laughs> Come on. But what does Jeremiah 33, 3 say that we, that we heard earlier? Call to me and I will answer you. I'm going to show you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out on your own. God has so much he wants us to learn. Because God's answer is the bigger perspective. And God knows what we want and need more than ourselves. So pray. Sing. Jesus, draw me close to you. Spirit, reveal the holy perspective that I need to hear. So let's close with a word of prayer. Loving Lord, I pray a simple prayer today. Just a sincere prayer. We need to know you better. We need to listen to you better. We need to hear you better. We need to speak to you more. May we fall in love with you the way you love us. Thank you, God, for the beauty of this congregation for each person here. Beautiful souls, Lord.